Okay, so yesterday we talked about thoughtful adjectives. Now we're going to talk about how a writer can show his readers what is occurring and what is going on and not tell them. So we're going to look at the sample sentence, the children went inside when the rain started. Okay, it's a simple sentence. It tells us what's going on. <clears throat> Each of us could visualize being outside at recess, the rain starting, and our teachers getting us back in the building. Okay, that's a telling sentence and doesn't give a lot of details and definitely does not have any of our thoughtful adjectives. Okay, so now what we want to do as readers is we don't want to tell, or excuse me, as writers, we don't want to tell the readers what's happening. We want to show them, we want them to create those mental images. So when you tell a reader what's happening in a story, it leaves the reader with a lot of unanswered questions. For example, our sentence. Well, how many children went inside? Where Were they enjoying the rain? Was it already raining? Um, did they know it was going to rain? Was it raining lightly or was it raining a lot? You know, it gives us no evidence for the reader to make those inferences and those connections to the story. When a writer shows the reader what is occurring, he helps the reader to see the scene and the action. He helps the reader to understand the character and feelings and thoughts. He provides evidence to the reader to make their own connections. Okay, so for example, if we wanted to describe the scene using precise detail, so we want to think about the scene itself. The children went inside when the rain started. Well, what about the crowd of children? Okay, that goes from being at home, where it might be you and your sibling, you're outside, it starts raining, okay, you two come in, no big deal. But then think about if all the third grade classes were outside on the playground, it starts to rain, now you have a crowd of children trying to get in the building all at the same time. That's a different mental image, okay? Then we could also think about the action. So now we're thinking about the verb as well as the noun. So you're not just giving thoughtful adjectives, but you're giving thoughtful adverbs as well. And you're thinking of the way to increase the reader's ability to see the scene. So now all of a sudden, it's not just the children went inside. Okay, it's raining, let's go inside. Now all of the children hurried inside when it started pouring rain. Okay, that's a little bit different image in my head from, oh, it's raining. Okay, let's pick up everything, walk inside. Now all of a sudden there's a huge crowd of children outside. It starts pouring rain and we're all running for the door. Okay, it's definitely a different visual image. Okay, but we also use figurative language. Oh boy, here come our idioms that we worked on last week. Okay, when we talk, or week before last, sorry. When we talk about um using figurative language it is the way for us to give details and descriptions for people to visualize so the crowd of children hurried inside as quick as rabbits when the rain started to fall like a water fountain from the sky okay that's a little bit more descriptive now was it really a water fountain coming out of the sky no were the children did they really turn into rabbits no but can you visualize how quick they were running in and how hard that rain was falling. Yes, okay. Another thing that you can use to show what's going on instead of telling is the use of dialogue. And you know in your narratives that dialogue is a requirement. That's one of the things that we look for when you're giving us a narrative story. So you can use that to help you describe and show what is going on. So let's read this sentence together. Then someone in the crowd of children screamed, run for cover, as they all raced inside when the rain started to fall. You know, these sentences, all four of these new examples have given us just a little bit more to the story and they've shown us the story instead of told us what was happening. We now have a visual image in our head that this was not just a simple rain show and the kids were outside playing and you know, they just skip into their house. No, this is the whole third grades outside. It starts unloading a bucket of water and we are headed for the door. All right, let's go to the next page. All right, let's look at a new example for showing, not telling. The new boy walked into the classroom and sat in his desk. He didn't speak to anyone. Well, 
Why didn't he speak to anyone? Was he happy? Was he sad? Was he scared? Was this his first day? Well, it says new boy. So how did he know where to sit? We don't have a lot of details here. We, all we have is more questions. What kind of desk were they? Did somebody tell him where to sit? How did he know which one to sit at? We don't have any details because this is a telling sentence, not a showing sentence. So let's go to the next page and see how we can make it better. All right, so now we have a lot of things, a lot of questions. How does the boy feel? Is he happy? Is he scared? Is he confident? So the, the ideas in this sentence that show that he tells that this is a telling sentence is the boy walked into the classroom. He sat in his desk. He didn't speak. These are just telling us the actions. They don't give us a lot of details. We can't visualize them. So let's think about the boy walked into the classroom. How did he walk? Okay, well, he walked slowly. There's a clue about action. If you're happy, are you walking slow? Are you pretty much skipping along at a pretty steady pace? I agree. It's probably that if he was happy, he would not have been walking slowly. So more than likely, he might have been a little scared or a little nervous, okay? He obviously was not confident if he was walking slowly. So then we have the boy slid shyly into his desk. Ooh, that adds a little bit more to the story now. So we know that he was not confident walking in. Now he's shy as he's sliding into his desk. So that tells us that he might be very nervous, okay? He didn't speak. Instead, let's change that to without saying a word. So we have a good clue about how he feels here. So let's put that all together in a sentence. It would then read, the boy walked slowly into the classroom and slid shyly into his desk without saying a word. This tells me that the student is new to class. He's very scared and nervous and he's worried maybe that he wouldn't make any friends. So this is how it goes from a telling sentence to a showing sentence. Just in adding those details, we now have a better understanding of this character's frame of mind. All right, let's go to the next page. All right, so here we go. We are going to talk about today's assignment. You are going to rewrite a sentence and change it from a showing sentence, I mean, from a telling sentence to a showing sentence. So the girl screamed as she opened her presence. Is the girl excited or upset? How do you know? Okay, the example gives us the girl jumped for joy and screamed, oh my, I finally got one, as she ripped into her present. Now we know the girl is super excited and this is something that she's been wanting for a long time. So the first sentence, the telling sentence, where it said the girl screamed as she opened her present, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is my brother used to like to pull cranks on me with my presence. So sometimes I would scream because a plastic snake or something like that would fall out of the box. Okay, that's different from what the showing sentence tells us that the girl is very happy and she got what she wanted and they have made her Christmas or birthday extra special by getting exactly what she was hoping for. Now it's your turn to practice. Here's your sentence. When the snake came out of the hole, the boy stood there. Okay, so you get to choose. Is the boy scared or curious? How do you know? So I want you to rewrite this to a showing sentence that tells me what the boy what he was feeling okay all right have a good day guys